Hey everyone, what's going on? In this video, I'm just going to show the same things that I've been showing for a number of years, and that is how my stream of consciousness and the synchronicities and the patterns that I notice within my life, they're always synced up to the mainstream media stories. And I know a lot of people think that synchronicities just happen every now and then and so on, but that's really not the case. They happen a lot more often than you think, and I see them on a daily basis, multiple times a day. I see them with other people's lives. I'm just really paying attention to these things that are going on. I know a lot of people, they want to hear more about murder by numbers than, than they want to hear about how, you know, murder by numbers was on the album called synchronicity, right? But this is a really big piece to this knowledge. And when you start to pay attention to it, you'll start to deprogram yourself a bit that every certain number has to have some meaning to the cabal that is you know, everybody thinks is ruling over us, which I do agree there's, there's definitely some type of cabal that is using esoteric knowledge to try to you know, manipulate the minds and so on. It, it's very obvious to me with hidden things in movies. And I mean, think about all the stuff with hidden about 9-11 in movies, and then you get 911 on the emergency dialing code 911. You know that numbers are important. Skull and bones, 322. You know that their numbers are important to this, and there is some type of agenda. But with Gematria, there is something much deeper that so many people are missing out on because they're decoding things and saying every number means this. But if you follow your stream of consciousness, you will understand that you can place meaning on a certain number to have it connect to your own life and your own experience. And then you might keep seeing that number and you realize that you realize that connection because it's personal to you. And then two years later, it might be connected to something completely different. And then you realize how these two unrelated things that don't seem like they should be connected are actually connected. There's a lot of things that are going on, you know, which is interesting. I'm going to talk about spiders here in a second and synchronicity with spiders. And, you, you know, think about spider web and how everything is, you know, everything in this world, it seems to exist like a spider web. It's all, you know, entangled and connected and so on. And, you know, if you just really pay attention, that's what I want people to start doing. Start paying attention. These things are going on all of the time and they're guiding you. But anyway, on October 8th, I made this blog post because I saw that the, uh, the wrestler named Sarah Lee had died. And this stood out to me right away because back in August, I had this weird synchronicity with the bread, Sarah Lee. I was out at the dollar store and... I went with my girlfriend's brother who lives with us and we were supposed to get cheesy bread because my girlfriend wanted it because she was making spaghetti for supper and he was going to buy the cheesy bread, but I, he doesn't have a license, whatever. I took him to the dollar store and then I thought I'm going to get another loaf of bread, like a regular one, because I know my one kid is going to want to have peanut butter and jelly. He's not going to eat the spaghetti and so on. And when I got there, I noticed that all they had was Sarah Lee bread and I was like, I'm not buying that. That's an expensive one, you know? And uh, then uh, what, for whatever reason, that seeing the Sarah Lee bread, it made me start thinking of the song, Nobody Does It Like Sarah Lee. And then as I was starting to leave the store, I was realizing like, wait, I think that's actually one of the Mandela Effect things. And I had been talking about the Mandela Effect leading up to this a bit. And I was like, huh. And then... Uh, I even asked the guy working, I said, is it nobody does it or nobody doesn't? And he was like, no, it's definitely does it, you know? And then I went home and I looked it up and it's, it's actually nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. And I was like, it is a Mandela effect. That's crazy. But, uh, another reason that I thought it was so important was because I had been following this number 424, like crazy. And when we got up there to pay for the cheesy bread, my girlfriend's brother's card wouldn't work in the deal. And I ended up buying it, but and when his card wouldn't work, I tried swiping it for him and all that. And then I noticed that it expired on the date 424. And I'm like, what are the odds? You know, I'm talking about 424 like crazy. Then his card, it says 424. And then I have this weird thing with Sarah Lee. And I realized that it is a, a Mandela effect, right? And this was on August 17th. So I was like, I wonder if the death of this wrestler, Sarah Lee, is connected to that weird experience that I blogged about with Sarah Lee the Bread. And... 
Of course, they announced this girl's death on October 6th. Her mom announced it. And if you went from my synchronicity to October 6th, it was 51 days, also one month and 20 days. And that was interesting because if you write out wrestler, it equals 51 and 120, a lot like this, right? 51, 120. And if you write out WWE, it equals 51. If you write out WWE tough enough, the show that she was on, it equals 51. If you write out her name in the Francis Bacon ciphers, her name equals 120. Her husband, who's also a wrestler, his name also equals 120. So I was like, what are the odds that is this connected, you know? And further, she actually died on October 5th. And if you go from her birthday to October 5th, she died 120 days after her birthday even, right? So she died 120 days after her birthday and one month and 20 days after my synchronicity is the day they reported her death. And her name also equaled 128 like the Mandela effect. So once again, I was like, it's totally connected to my post or my synchronicity or whatever with Sarah Lee Bread and so on. And, you know, Vince McMahon even equals 120, right? The guy who just retired from the WWE and... This, these two numbers are big time with wrestling and so on. 51 and 120. But that doesn't necessarily mean the Illuminati is responsible for the WWE. You know, Illuminati's 120. I mean, that, that, these are the type of things I'm saying. Like, you, you need to stay on topic a bit, right? Because maybe it's connected to the Illuminati. That's kind of just speculation. You don't know for sure if it's important to... The Illuminati is responsible for her death or whatever, but that's how a lot of people would decode it, it seems, within this community. Or even, you know, Mandela effect equals 67, and this girl was born on 6-7. Most people would write, oh, she's born on 6-7, blood sacrifice equals 67. And since she died 120 days after her birthday, that means the Illuminati blood sacrificed her and stuff like that. That's the type of stuff that I just, I can't get around anymore when I'm decoding. I'm like, what? What is going on here? Like, maybe, but why don't we stick with the details, right? That seems a little bit more consistent. You know, you she's connected to WWE. She was a wrestler, you know. It, you know, these things are actually fully connected, right? You can speculate on the other things, but it doesn't make them true. But anyway, so I was thinking about this girl, Sarah Lee, and how she's on Tough Enough. And... It just made me wonder if there was something important to the band Cold, because there's this band Cold who I used to love when I was younger. They were one of my favorite bands, and I had recently just listened to them on September 29th, so like a week before she died, but they wrote the theme song for Tough Enough 2, which I always thought was very weird because it's kind of a ballad song, and you think it for wrestling and so on, it should be more of an upbeat song and so on. But it's like a ballad song. So I was like, since I I, mean, I just randomly remembered this band out of nowhere at work one day. And I talked about them for about an hour. And I even mentioned how this song, Gone Away, was on Tough Enough 2 at work to a bunch of women who really don't care because they never watched wrestling and so on. But I just, I knew a bunch about that song and a bunch about this band. And I took a screenshot of it because I was like, for me to remember this, it must be important. And... Then I saw Sarah Lee died and she's on Tough Enough. So I was like, huh, maybe there's something connected to this band. And, you know, I pointed out the connections to their name and so on. But they have a big infatuation with spiders. A lot of their albums have to do with spiders. Let me see if I can find it here. But like 13 Ways to Bleed on Stage. This is one of their albums. And it has the spider on it. Then their next album was called Year of the Spider. That's all about spider symbolism. I just started thinking about Year of the Spider. And how many times I've connected things to the Chinese years. Like the, the year of the pig and the year of the rat. And the year of the tiger. And the next year is going to be the year of the rabbit. right? So I just thought that was interesting. And I noticed that in... Gematria, if you're out year of the spider, it equal 226. And a few days before this, I had actually talked a whole lot about, what was it? October 5th. I mentioned how, I talked about Aaron Judge, but I noticed Aaron Judge equal 226. And it's just a big number that I had been recently seeing a whole lot. The number 226, I talked about my girlfriend and the umbrella symbolism and 
her name equals 226. And I noticed this, I made a blog post about the Seattle Mariners right around that same time and how they had made the, the playoffs for the first time since 2001, the year they got upset by the New York Yankees right after 9-11 and so on. And Seattle Mariners equal 226. And I had recently put that umbrella video up that was two hours and 26 minutes long. And I noticed that when Zach made the video with the updated Gematronator calculator, that that video was two minutes and 26 seconds long. Just I've just been seeing the number 226 like all over the place. So when I saw a year of the spider equal 226, I was like, there must be something important to, to that, right? Because I've been talking about how I'm seeing 226. I'm following the stream of consciousness, thinking tough enough to, thinking it's connected to this girl named Sarah Lee dying, who's from tough enough, and then 226 here, right? You see what I'm saying? I'm just like thinking, huh, there must be something I'm supposed to see with this. And I even wrote in here, if there's something important to spiders and wrestling, it has to be connected to David Arquette, who was in the movie Eight-Legged Freaks. And Eight-Legged Freaks, if you don't know, is a movie that is all about spiders, right? Spiders that, whatever, they get nuclear waste on them and they get big and then they attack the town and so on. But it has David Arquette in the movie. And David Arquette is in a, there's a whole bunch of stuff. He's connected to wrestling. In 2018, he was in a bloody wrestling match and that I'll talk about here in a minute. But he's connected to wrestling. He's also in that uh, movie called Ready to Rumble that I blogged about with that bloody wrestling match from 2018 because it has Jimmy King in it. And like one of the main characters is Jimmy King. And the guy who plays Jimmy King is even related to Princess Diana and a bunch of stuff. So I knew there was an importance to King symbolism and the royal family and whatever. And David Arquette just so happens to be born on September 8th, the day that Queen Elizabeth died, right? And it gets even crazier here, this video, because the next day after blogging about eight-legged freaks and so on, we got the death of Sean Penn's mother. I can't think of what her name is right now. Seven Sean Penn. Sean Penn's mother, Eileen Ryan. She ended up dying on October 9th. And she just so happens to be in the movie Eight-Legged Freaks with David Arquette. So what are the odds that... You know, a lady from Eight-Legged Freaks would die after I say there must be something important to David Arquette in the movie Eight-Legged Freaks, you know. And further, I found out yesterday that Rambo actually made a video on the same day I made that blog post about the queen and the spider and how there was a spider on the casket of Queen Elizabeth and a whole bunch of other things here. But, you know... He, it's deep here. There's something crazy going on, you know, but what are the odds Rambo makes a video about the spider and how it's connected to Queen Elizabeth and so on. And that same day I'm following the stream of consciousness and I figure out that there's something important to spiders in the movie Eight Legged Freaks and then David Arquette's born on the same day the Queen died. Further, Rambo is even connecting it to this Tony Siragusa guy who died. He's a former Baltimore Raven who wore the number 98. A lot like the date that Queen Elizabeth died. And he talked about the movie Charlotte's Web and the Raven and the Goose and also the Spider. And I'll talk about that later. But what's interesting is Tony Siragusa, he died on 22 slash 6 this year, like 226. And in Gematria, if you write out Baltimore Ravens, it equals 226. And the Francis Bacon Ciphers. And he also talked about how Tony Siragusa's birthday was on May 14th, which is an interesting thing because in the book Charlotte's Web, Charlotte lays 514 eggs at the end of the book or whatever. And if you write out September 8th in the Jewish cipher, it equals 514. And what really stands out to me about this with this 514 stuff is the fact that if you look up Tough Enough 2, the soundtrack for Tough Enough 2 that I'm talking about, the song Gone Away by Cold, look when it came out, May 14th, 514. Like how, I mean, how unbelievable is that? 514? It came out in the year 2002, which is the same year that Eight-Legged Freaks came out, which is also the same year that Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire came out, which is also the same year that Queen Elizabeth's mother and sister died. I mean, 
2002 is also an interesting year because that's the last time the Angels won the World Series. And if you go back to May and June, I was following this big pattern with the New York Mets and how they were related to an Angel theme and with Matt Harvey and a whole bunch of stuff. But the Mets ended up just losing in connection to a synchronicity I had with the death of Heather or O'Rourke on June 11th, which just happens to be Rambo's birthday. And on that same day, the Mets lost 6-11 to on 6-11 to the Los Angeles Angels. And of course, the Mets lost to the San Diego Padres. And if you know the story of Heather O'Rourke from the movie Poltergeist, she got sick on the same day the Super Bowl was held in San Diego, and then she died the next day in San Diego. So there's this big connection to that and a whole lot more with it. I mean, I'll come back and explain it, but in relation to Tough Enough 2 and the song Gone Away and how it is connected to that Tony Siragusa guy who played for the Baltimore Ravens, right? Notice that the song Gone Away is also written about the lead singer of Cold's daughter and her da his daughter's name is Raven. So her, I mean, Rambo is spot on with what he's talking about here. And I'm being shown this through synchronicities. See what I'm saying? Just by following a stream of consciousness, like what are the odds that he writes the song at, for his daughter named Raven. And then it comes out on Tony Siragusa's birthday. The guy who played for the Ravens, the same year that eight legged freaks came out and the same year that Spider-Man came out on Tony Siragusa's birthday. It's ridiculous. But anyway, let me let me go back and explain some more of this stuff. So I had all the stuff with Sarah Lee, and I thought maybe that the movie Eight-Legged Freaks with David Arquette would be important, and that was on October 8th on Saturday. And what, what else is interesting in regards to the Met stuff and in, in that synchronicity with Heather O'Rourke? I had to DJ this night on October 8th in Charter Oak, Iowa, and the last time that I actually DJed there just so happened to be June 11th, the same day that I had that synchronicity with Heather O'Rourke. And what's funny is if you write out Charter Oak, Charter Oak, Iowa, just so happens to equal 226. So I knew there was something that was somehow important to that, right? And, but I'm just saying, like, so that same night that I had the synchronicity with Heather O'Rourke on Rambo's birthday, I DJed there again on the same night that I wrote about the eight legged freaks and I had to work the next morning and I went to work and let me see here. I went to work the next morning and there, there's an older guy. He's like about 50 who I, he only works on Sunday mornings and I don't normally work Sundays. So I barely ever talk to him. But when I got to work that day, he, uh, we were talking about old eighties movies and so on. And then out of nowhere, he's like, have you ever seen the movie Eight Legged Spiders? And he started telling me about it. And I was like, yeah. And I'm just sitting there thinking, what are the odds that last night I blogged about Eight Legged Eight Legged Freaks? And then he's asking me if I've ever seen Eight Legged Freaks while we're talking about 80s movies. And Eight Legged Freaks is not a movie from the 80s. So it just really made no sense how it even came up in the conversation. He just randomly brought up, have you ever seen Eight Legged Freaks? And I was like, well, that's crazy. Yeah, I've seen it. And then we talked about the movie for a while. And then we talked about Ready to Rumble and David Arquette, and I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me. This guy has no idea that I'm blogging, I blogged about that last night, and he brings it up, and then we have a conversation about it at work. You know, and then on that same day, we got the death of Sean Penn's mother, right? The very same day, it didn't, the news wasn't until October 10th, but that same day, we got the death of Eileen Ryan, who was in Eight-Legged Freaks. She was uh, David Arquette's Aunt Gladys in the movie. It's like, what are the odds of that stuff, you know? So I was trying to figure out what the the purpose of me seeing Eight-Legged Freaks was because I didn't know that Sean Penn's mother had died yet. And I was just like, man, there's got to be something to the spider theme that's going on. And I noticed in Gematria that if you're out Eight-Legged Freaks, it equals 310. And that was interesting because David Arquette is also in the movie called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And in 2018, I had this a bunch of weird stream of consciousness things that were leading me to think that there was something important to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And it was all about the number 310. So when I saw Eight-Legged Freaks was 310, I thought, interesting. And 
If you go back to 2018, on like November 17th, there was a story about David Arquette being in a bloody wrestling match. I blogged about it on November 20th, but it was November 17th. He was in this bloody wrestling match. And notice it's important to Elizabeth crying. Think about Queen Elizabeth here and Macho Man that I'll get into here in a second. But a few days after this, there was a story about a 310-mile dust storm in Australia. And also on that same day, we had a story about Sarah Michelle Geller, who's Buffy the Vampire Slayer in the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer and how she wore sexy lingerie. And when I was looking into this story... I was thinking about the David Arquette story because David Arquette's in Buffy the Vampire Slayer and he's best friends with Luke Perry who ends up being Buffy's boyfriend in the movie, right? So I was like, huh, there has to be something connected to this. And I pointed out how Buffy the TV show premiered on the date 310 and if you write out Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it equals 310. I later learned the Francis Bacon ciphers and Buffy Summers, the name of the character, equals 310. And also... That movie, that, which I loved as a kid, it's one of my favorite movies for some weird reason, it came out three months and ten days before my birthday even. So I knew there was something important to the number 310, and I was following it with Buffy. And then three months and ten days later, we got the death of Luke Perry, right? Luke Perry, who was Buffy the Vampire Slayer's boyfriend in the movie. So what are the odds that Luke Perry would die three months and ten days after I blog about Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the number 310? And of course, he was David Arquette's best friend in the movie Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And there was a whole bunch of other stuff with this. The same day that he died, there was a story about Corey Feldman tweeting and, and about Michael Jackson. And they had just released that movie called Leaving Neverland. And of course, you know, think about Neverland and then think about the vampire movie The Lost Boys that Corey Feldman is in. And I went and rewatched the movie The Lost Boys. And they do this. I watched The Lost Boys too because I'd never seen it before. And. They do this distinct whistle in the movie, and what's weird is that I had noticed that whistle. It was a different whistle, but it was the same, like, slowed-down version in my daughter's show called Troll Hunters that she really loved. And so I looked up that song, and it was written by a guy whose name equaled 310, and it was written for a play that came out on the day leaving 310 days in the year and a whole bunch of stuff. I was like, this number 310, it is the, the business right now, right? And... I guess moral of the story is that that's why I thought there was something important to this narrative. Eight-legged freaks equals 310. And then uh, while I was writing up this blog post about the number 310 and thinking it's connected to Buffy, I turned on the New York Mets versus Padres game. It was game three, and the Mets were losing pretty bad. And I noticed that the pitcher of the Mets or of the Padres was Joe Musgrove. And that game just so happened to be 310 days after his birthday. I was like, what are the odds? 310 days after that guy's birthday? And like I said, a few days before this, I had blogged about how possibly I was going to be wrong with the New York Mets because of the synchronicity I had at the Charter Oak Bar on Rambo's birthday, June 11th, into, in, into June 12th, right? And, uh, there's really a ton to explain with this because it's just so deep of a synchronicity. But on June 11th, I had that sync with Heather O'Rourke when I was DJing at the bar. And earlier that day, there was a story about Wendy's in the news. And Wendy's was important in 2017 to a theme with twins that I was following that was also important to the angel Gabriel. And there was just a story in the news about the umpire named Angel Hernandez, right? Or Angel however you say it, ain't, but Angel, it looks like, right? Hernandez was in the news, and his birthday was August 26th, which was this big day I was following with this twin theme and how it was linked up to Wendy's and a whole bunch of stuff, right? And Wendy's is owned by Dave Thomas, and of course, Thomas means twins, and Dave Thomas just so happened to die in the year 2002, the last time the Angels had won the World Series and a whole bunch of stuff, right? And then later that night, I was at the bar DJing and one of my friends tagged me in this post about Heather O'Rourke and the coincidences with San Diego. And then I wrote a big old thing. I was connected to the the Dodgers and the, the baseball season and a whole bunch of stuff here. And 
Then I looked up Heather O'Rourke on my blog, and the only two blog posts I have about her, they it was all about twins, right? So I was like, there has to be something important to this. There's a weird synchronicity with twins. And uh, what's interesting about the twin theme as well, that was in 2017 that I was following all that stuff with twins, and that was the year the Astros went on to win the, or yeah, they went on to win the World Series, and Astros in all capital letters is 226. Something I've been following, the importance of all capital letters and so on, so. And right now they're playing the Seattle Mariners that equal 226. So it's just interesting. They're the only two teams left to have a 226 connection, as far as I know, but. There, there was also a father symbolism thing going on in 2017, right? A whole bunch of stuff. I was talking about Jesuit priests and father symbolism and think about padres and the word padre means father. So th th there was some like things that were leading me to when I saw that the the Mets, see on that same day it was 6-11 and the Mets lost 6-11 to the Angels. So I was like, huh, there's something to that. And even if you write out Heather O'Rourke, Heather O'Rourke, her name equals 246, just like New York Mets. So I was like, huh, you know, that there's this interesting connection. And then when I seen that San Diego Padres were playing the New York Mets on, you know, in the playoffs, I was like, cool, it might be connected to this here with the Heather O'Rourke stuff. And the Mets did lose 6-11 to to the Angels on that day, right? So I was like, huh, maybe the Mets aren't going to be in the World Series this year. Maybe it's just something... You know, that was kind of interrelated to what I was following. But another big thing I was, I've been following with the Mets was the symbolism with the Queen, right? They play in Queens, New York, and they were linked up to the 2015 World Series with Matt Harvey. And Matt Harvey had just been suspended over the Tyler Skagg stuff. And then just after the Mets lose in the World Series, the guy from, the guy, the Angels employee who, Gave the drugs or whatever to Tyler Skaggs. He ended up getting 22 years in prison, which is interesting, right? But I'm, I guess I'm just bringing this up because I pointed out these connections. If you went from Matt Harvey's birthday to the day of game two of that series, it was six months, 11 days. And if you went from Matt Harvey's birthday to the day that the Mets actually lost to the Padres, it was six months and 12 days. And think how I had that synchronicity on the night of 6-11 into 6-12. So the, both of them days were important, and then the Mets end up losing on that day. And they lost on 10-9, and then they went on to play Los Angeles. Of course, think about the Angels in Los Angeles, but also think about the Dodgers, who they went on to play, and Los Angeles equals 109. And I just pointed out all these interesting connections to what was going on. So I hope that makes sense, but moral of the story is that that was the reason why I even turned this game on, was I saw all these 310 stuff, and then I turned on this game because I was interested to see, like, if anything was important for me to see in this game. And then I saw the pitcher. It was 310 days after his birthday. And, of course, there was other connections, like how it was 57 days before his next birthday. Mets is 57. New York Mets, 57. Also one month, 26 days. Like how San Diego equals 126. But... When I finally actually turned on the game, it was interesting because right when I turned it on... There was a hit to left field and I couldn't get a screenshot of it. And I'm watching it on mama HD. So I couldn't rewind it or anything, but there was a hit to left field. And I noticed on the left field wall, there's a big advertisement for spiders and it's not, I don't think it's the same one, but you can see how it says S P D R here. And that is advertisement for some stock company called spider. And I was like, what are the odds? It says spider out on the left field, you know, of the game. And then I, I mean, it's like, what are the odds? I turn on the game and I see the word spider and I'm following the stuff with spiders. And then it says spider in left field right when I turn on the game. And then the, the pitcher who's pitching, it's 310 days after his birthday. So I knew that all of this was somehow interrelated, right? And then it was linked up to Heather O'Rourke. And I also pointed out how November 6th, a lot like 611, is the 310th day of the year. So I'm just like, what is going on? You know, spiders everywhere, right? And... What's even weirder is that, so I went to work that day and the guy asked me if I seen the movie Eight Legged Freaks, which was weird. But later in the day, some other guy was getting a fountain pop and out of nowhere, he like started asking me about DJing and he said, do you ever play the song 
finger fucking Sally by David Allen Coe. And I was like, you know, I've never played that song. I've never even heard it. But what's funny is last night while I was DJing, somebody actually requested that song and I even downloaded it and I put it into my playlist at the bottom. But then people started singing karaoke and it just kind of never fit to like play the song. So I never played the song, but I thought it was interesting that like some guy would just randomly ask me if I ever play that while I'm DJing. And then I'm like, what are the odds that I actually just downloaded that song last night because someone requested it and I've never heard the song. And I looked forever. I was like, man, is there a, I couldn't figure out. There was no connection to 310, but I was like, there's gotta be something to that. Right. And so I was making this blog post. I see this 310. Then I see the spider thing out here. And I was still kind of researching whatever, doing this blog post. And then I was like, I wonder what the 310th song is in my playlist, right? Of my DJ playlist that I used last night. And I looked up the 310th song and it's always changing. These songs, I, I move them around all the time, depending on the crowd, because you never, the crowd is so different all of the time. Like sometimes it's like all country night. Sometimes it's like eighties night. I, I don't know how to explain it. Crowds are very different when you're DJing, but what are the odds that the 310th song at when I, DJ that night before it was the outfield called your love, right? It was a song called your love by the outfield. And then I noticed this right after I see the synchronicity with spider in the outfield. It's like, just what are the odds of that? You know? And then it's the 310th song. And then the place where I was DJing equals 226. And what's even crazier is then when I, when I finally found Rambo's video, I didn't even blog about this yet, but when I finally found Rambo's video, Bobby told me about it yesterday and I was at work and I went to watch it a little bit at work. And when I got to the video, I noticed it says up next and it has the outfield on there. I don't, maybe there's a reason for that, but it's just like, I watched a ton of other stuff in between there. So it's really odd that, uh, I, I get here to go to watch Rambo's video. And then it says up next is the outfield. So I know even more that it's important for some reason, you know, and uh, I was going to look it up, but I, I can't remember if there's any connections. I don't know. I don't know the meaning with the outfield and Gematria, but there, there's something important to that. And it's crazy that I would have see the outfield, the spider thing in the outfield. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, it's just craziness that that's the 310th song, but I further, I just kept researching. I was like, there's gotta be something to do with my old David Arquette post that I talked about here. The one with the bloody wrestling match, if I even have it in here anymore. Yeah, this one right here. So back in 2018, there was this bloody wrestling match. And, you know, I talked about the movie Ready to Rumble and Jimmy King is played by this guy. And if you read about him, it says he's even related to Princess Diana. And... David Arquette then posted a picture of his tattoo and it looked like Miss Elizabeth bleeding. And he had a tattoo of Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth. And I connected that to Queen Elizabeth, right? Because of the King, Jimmy King and the King symbolism. And then in his bloody wrestling match where he got a cut from that and it looked like Miss Elizabeth was crying, right? So then think about how Queen Elizabeth ends up dying on his birthday, which is even stranger, you know. And Miss Elizabeth was, she died on 5-1, once again, WWE 51, Wrestler 51. My Sarah Lee synchronicity was five or 51 days before she was reported dead and so on. I even went on to talk about the celebrity death match with Michael Jordan and Prince versus Prince Charles. Prince the Singer. Prince, is, Prince the Singer, his name equals 226, right? Prince Rogers Nelson 226. So there is something deep with that 226. And Michael Jordan was important to Princess Charlotte back then because he was 52 years old. Michael Jordan also owned the Charlotte Hornets or the Bobcats or whatever it was, right? The So he's important to Charlotte. And then Charlotte, of course, is the feminine of Charles and a bunch of stuff. But that the Kentucky Derby was on 5-2 in 2015 and... The horse that won was American Pharaoh that was all about 52. I can't remember at all, but the morning odds were like 5-2. And maybe American Pharaoh equals 52. And the jockey was, his name equaled 52 or he was 52 years old or something. It was all about 52. Tons of stuff. Then Princess Charlotte was born on 5-2. And 
I'm pretty sure I pointed out how Charlotte's Web came out in 1952, and that was the same year that Queen Elizabeth became the queen, right? 1952, when she was 25, The Reflection. Interestingly enough, the, the Charlotte's Web, the book, came out 252 days after Queen Elizabeth became the queen, too, like 25 and 52. And E.B. White, right? E.B. E is, e is 5, B is 2, like 52. So, and then Charlotte's Web equaled 52. I also talked about the, oh, what was it? The Kyle Bush or whatever, whose name I think equals 52, and he got injured earlier in the year, and he made his comeback at Charlotte. And his birthday was 5 2. That's what it was. His birthday was that day, and he made his comeback at Charlotte at the All Star race, then went on to win the NASCAR Cup Series that year. But 52 was really big that year because it was the 239th year of the United States, and that's the 52nd prime number. Then he had the Pope, who came and visited the White House on 23 slash 9. Pope equals 52, White House 52. You know, tons of stuff. 52 days later, the, the, ISIS attack happened, ISIS 52 in Paris, France. And in the Francis Bacon Gematria, where the capital letters are important, the word God equals 52, and there's 52 letters to, you know, that you use, the lowercase and the capital letters. Think about the 52 cards on a playing deck, too, and how that relates to the royal family, right? The You know, the kings, the queens, and so on. The 52 cards, the 52 weeks in a year. 52 is, you know, really big here, but moral of the story is, you know, I think about Charlotte's Web and the Spider, but moral of the story is I was talking about King's symbolism with this, right? With David Arquette and the King, and then, you know, Queen Elizabeth dies on his birthday of all days, and then Prince Charles becomes King Charles. And, you know, I guess I'm just trying to point out that I was talking about how it was connected to the king symbolism, right? So it's crazy that I talked about that this long ago with a post about David Arquette, and then she ends up dying on his birthday. And I'm just trying to think here. So I was just, I was really just trying to think about all this. I was trying to like piece together why it's important to spiders and so on. And I started thinking out recently, my son, Alistair, who was, he was actually really important. He was born on the day Princess Diana died in France. And the day that he was born was a day I was watching for with NASCAR and so on. And I thought uh, something important with France was going to happen and maybe a racer was going to die. Then we got the death of the French racer Antoine Hubert on that same day. And he died in connection to the number 22. And it was the 22nd anniversary of Princess Diana dying in France and a bunch of stuff. And a big thing we were following that year was Tisha Bob, right? And then I was following Tisha Bob like crazy this year. But the number 310 in that Buffy stuff was also related to the date August 10th, which was important to France, which was also the day Tisha Bob began in 2018. So moral of the story, I'm just sitting here thinking how my son has recently just started being obsessed with Spider-Man. He's even sleeps with this little Spider-Man doll every night. He refers to himself as Spider-Man. He watches Spider-Man all the time. And I'm like, huh, maybe there's some important to my son. And his name's Alistair, and that equals 310. Just like Alistair Crowley, his name is spelled like the different spelling. It also equals 310. So I was just thinking, huh, maybe there's something important to that. You know, I don't know. And then I started thinking about how Spider-Man was actually important to Tisha Bob in 2019. Because just before Tisha Bob happened... They came out with a movie, a Spider-Man movie, and they showed that Peter Parker's birthday was August 10th, the day that Tisha Bob began that year. So I was like, you know, it was connected to that. And then we also had a story about the guy who created the Louvre Pyramid named I.M. Pei had died. And right around that same time, we had a story about a man who climbed the Eiffel Tower, kind of reminding us of Spider-Man. And earlier, before that, I had talked about this kid who climbed the Trump Tower that was linked up to the date August 10th. And it was kind of like Spider-Man and a bunch of stuff. So I was like, I knew there was something important. Then, of course, on August 11th, the second day of Tisha Bob, the big thing was the the Hong Kong riots, right? That was the big thing in the news linked to the umbrella symbolism that I've recently been talking about. So Spider-Man was absolutely linked up to that 2019 Tisha Bob stuff. 
So I looked up the actor who played Spider-Man in this movie, right? That when his birthday is August 10th and his link to the Tisha Bob, his name's Tom Holland. Of course, his name equals 310 and also 226. Like what are the odds? 310 and 226, these two big numbers that I've been following. And then I was like how I've been following Tisha Bob this year like crazy. If you went from Tisha Bob to June 11th, which is Rambo's birthday or the day I had that synchronicity with Heather O'Rourke, is also 310 days. Or you could say that I released my book on August 6, 2021, that was 310 days before that synchronicity as well. My girlfriend's name also equals 226, and if you do it in all capital letters, her name equals 611, which I think I thought was interesting too, but... I later found out that Spider-Man was a Mets fan. What are the odds of that? Maybe that's why they have the spider ad in the, the left field. But Spider-Man, apparently his Uncle Ben and Spider-Man used to take him to a Mets game, and then he go, Spider-Man goes to a Mets game every year to kind of, like, honor him taking him to this Mets game or something. It's just like, I don't know that much about superhero movies, to tell you the truth, but... Spider-Man just so happens to be a Mets fan. It's like, what are the odds? Spider-Man was a Mets fan. Then I pointed out David Arquette died, or Queen Elizabeth died on David Arquette's 51st birthday. Like how Mets equal 51, wrestler 51, WWE equal fi equals 51, the Mets play in Queens. I also, you know, in relation to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I recently had a synchronicity with this movie called Mr. Herring Harrigan's Phone on Netflix. I was in the kitchen and I said, I can't remember what I said. Whatever I said, my girlfriend's mom was watching that movie and it said it at the exact same time I said it. Like, I can't remember what it was. Like, doesn't make any sense or something like that. And then the TV said, doesn't make any sense. And I was like, or her phone did. And I was like, what are you watching? I looked it up and it had Donald, Donald Sutherland on it. Well, Donald, Donald Sutherland just so happens to be born the same day that Eight-Legged Freaks came out, which is also June or July 17th, which is the day the House of Windsor was established, which Queen Elizabeth was part of. The House of Windsor, 71717, was when it was established. And that's also Prince Charles' wife, Camilla, or King Charles' wife, Camilla, that's her birthday, 717, same day the Eight Legged Freaks came out. But once again, it's Donald Sutherland's birthday, and Donald Sutherland is Merrick in the movie Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He's the trainer of Buffy and so on. And of course, Kiefer Sutherland is in The Lost Boys that was later important to that same synchronicity that I was talking about. That was related to Corey Feldman, right? And of course, Corey Feldman, you think about Corey, the two Corys and Corey Haim. Corey Haim died on the date 310, right? 310. And I don't want to get too far off topic, but just, I think it was yesterday or maybe two days ago, my friend actually texted me and he's like excited. He's going to go see Corey Feldman in Sioux City, Iowa here in, I don't know what it is. He's playing it a couple weeks. He's playing at, Sioux, at the Hard Rock Casino in Sioux City. And I was just like, what are the odds he ran? He has no idea. November 5th. He has no idea that I'm even talking about all this stuff again. And then he randomly Snapchats me telling me we should go to watch Corey Feldman in Sioux City. And Sioux City is also important to the stuff with Weird Al that's important to November 4th. That's important to Rihanna because Daniel Radcliffe, who plays Weird Al in the upcoming movie, he credits that he got that part because of when he was on this TV show with Rihanna. And that's where Weird Al chose him to be Weird Al or whatever. So Rihanna's even related to that. Daniel and Rihanna's important to Neptune. And Daniel Radcliffe's birthday is on July 23rd, which is Neptunalia, which is also the the day they it's important to the rising of Sirius and so on. But once again, just following the stream of consciousness and what are the odds my friend randomly messes me to go? He wants me to go to this show, but I already have a gig in Omaha that I have to play, so I can't go even though I, that would be cool i'd like to go see it be a weird one i bet but let me go back to this so david arquette and part of the queen i also recently talked about the artemis one launch and how it was related to michael jackson and charlie sheen in the movie scary movie three and you know 
that movie has the connections to Scream that has David Arquette in it. They just came out with a new Scream movie where, spoiler alert, muted or pause it for a second, but David Arquette actually dies in that movie. So. But then looking at this tattoo, you know, Miss Elizabeth crying and Macho Man. And uh, the night before I made this blog post, or even realized this connection to this old post with, you know, involving Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth, I went to the bar in Dow City, Iowa, and there was no one there. It was literally me, the owner, and one other guy, and then the bartender, and that was it. And I, st I sat there and started talking to the owner because he's my friend, and I DJ there a lot. And last year, I didn't get a DJ the Halloween party that he had. I've been DJing it for like 10 years. And last year, I didn't get a DJ because he went on some hunting trip or something. And I, I had already had something booked on that day, so I didn't get a DJ. But when he ended up div, did doing his party, he was Macho Man Randy Savage. And he was showing me pictures of his costume last year. It was a pretty legit costume. He looked pretty close to Randy Savage, you know. And uh, I was like, that's weird that this David Arquette post has to do with Macho Man Randy Savage. And last night, the guy was showing me his Halloween costume and how he was Macho Man Randy Savage. And... That bar was also important to the 310 stuff in 2019. I had a bunch of synchronicity with uh, Clay Matthews that he had on his wall. I'm not going to go into that, but the owner of the bar, his name equals 310. You know, it's like, so once again, I know that it's important just by following patterns in my life. And back when that Highland Park shooting happened on the 4th of July, I remember, uh, there was something, I can't remember, somehow Macho Man was important to that. And at that time, I looked up Macho Man, and I found that he had this song called Be a Man Hulk or something. And he was singing, like, talking crap to Hulk Hogan and all that. And I remember sending it to my friends on Snapchat saying, man, DMX, DMX has nothing on Macho Man, because he's got like that, Be a Man Hulk, you know, he's got like that DMX type voice and so on and whatever. And uh, I never blogged about it, but... I went back and listened to the song again, and he even says in the song, what does he say? Your movie straight to video to the box office can't stand while I got myself a feature role in Spider-Man. And I was like, what are the odds that he would say he was in Spider-Man in that movie or in this song? And I looked it up, and sure enough, he is in the 2002 Spider-Man movie. His name's Bones McGraw, and he ends up fighting... Spider-Man right over in the very beginning in like a cage match, right? So it's like, it's crazy that Macho Man even has a connection to Spider-Man. Even crazier, now that I'm looking at this, that the clip I randomly clicked on was 3 of 10. What are the odds of that? Clip 3, 10 even. See, that's what I'm talking about, you know? And... While I was blogging about this, my son, it was late at night, but my son was not tired for some reason. And he just walked up over to me and he started telling me about aftershocks and earthquakes for no reason at all. And I just assumed he was watching some video on his tablet. But then a little bit later, I heard it. I heard it say something about earthquakes and I was like, oh, it is on his tablet. But think about wrestling and think about Hulk Hogan, something I've talked about forever with the Bridgewater shooting and how it's related to Roddy Piper, then Hulk Hogan getting his ribs broke against Earthquake in Philadelphia. And, you know, this year is going to be the 34th anniversary of the movie They Live coming out. And 34 was that big number I talked about with Roddy Piper and Ronda Rousey and WrestleMania 34 when Ronda Rousey had her first match and so on. So that 34th anniversary of They Live is interesting. On 11-4, the same day the Weird Al movie comes out. I just think about Hulk Hogan... Earthquakes, Macho Man making this song, telling Hulk Hogan to be a man. Vince McMahon just retired. On Vince McMahon has a birthday, same birthday as Linda Hogan. Hulk Hogan born on August 11th, that big day with Tisha Bob. He's a guy I even talked about in my book that I think he's really important. You know, Tisha Bob was, this year was on 8-6, and Hulk Hogan's birthday was 86 days before the 34th anniversary of They Live, and his birthday in... Roddy Piper's birthdays are separated by like eight months and six days, that 86 number. But
I also went to my first ever WWE event this year. I think on Jan it was on January 14th. A lot like 114. And think how they live is coming out on 114. DDP maybe. His birthday's five months and one day after they live. The anniversary. The thing with earthquakes and my son. It was this right here. But that was on 10-9, right? It makes me think of Los Angeles and earthquakes. Plus, I've talked a whole lot about how Queen Elizabeth died in connection to Field of Dreams and the Earthquake World Series. And this is going to be the 33rd year of that earthquake. And that earthquake was all about the number 33. So, possibly we're going to see another earthquake at a baseball game this year. I don't know. We'll see what, what goes on with it. Or something connected to earthquakes and the and how it connects to the World Series. Something of the sort. Maybe it won't be actually at the World Series, but maybe it will be there'll be a big one somewhere in the world while the World Series is going on, maybe. We will see, but we'll skip over all that, but <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of interesting things. System of a doubt. War. Queen Elizabeth had a spider on her deal, on her casket. Come back here. This number. I don't even know. So Rambo's video about the, yeah. So the queen, apparently at her funeral, there was a spider on her casket. That was a big thing, right? Just point out some stuff here, but but I mean, there's a ton of connections to the uh, Charlotte's Web and how it's related to Princess Charlotte and to the year that Queen Elizabeth became the queen and so on. But notice that Princess Charlotte was also born two months and 26 days after the anniversary of Queen Elizabeth being the queen. And I know, for, I know further I'm supposed to see this 226 number because YouTube just removed my Umbrella Man video, which really makes no sense. They say for misinformation. And everybody always says like, oh, they're taking down my channel or they're taking down my video because of the truth I'm sharing and all this. And I'm like, if you go watch that video, I was talking about, I was actually questioning the actual truth community that they normally take videos down of, right? And then they take down my video anyway. It's very strange. I'm like, why would you take down this video? Well, I really didn't even talk about anything that bad in the video other than, you know, questioning whether all these people connecting certain numbers to the cabal is actually really the cabal or if it, you know, if you could use the stream of consciousness and so on. It's like, what are they, why would they take that video down? It doesn't even make any sense. You think if anything, they'd want that video to be up, wouldn't you? So it's really weird, but... What's interesting is that video, once again, was that two hour and 26 minute video. So, and I had some synchronicity with a God theme and a bunch of stuff, but I don't know. I think that, I think a big thing I'm supposed to see is this number 226. And we just had the death of this Bruce Sutter guy, right? Bruce Sutter. You look him up. He died two months, 26 days before his birthday. It's like... You also had Bray Wyatt who just returned to the WWE and Bray Wyatt just so happens to be a guy who used to be known for doing the spider walk, right? That was one of his moves was the spider walk. Like get out of here, you know, the <laughs> spider walk. I think Derek pointed out how on his blog, how they advertised this thing where Bray Wyatt came back with a white rabbit reminding us of the Matrix and stuff. But if you watch the movie Eight-Legged Freaks, the reason that, like, the nuclear waste or whatever it is gets spilled into the water where the spiders, it gets on the spiders, is because the guy swerves to miss a rabbit. And it's just interesting because this coming year is going to be the Chinese year of the rabbit. So I think there's something really important to that, this next coming year, the year of the rabbit.
Bray Wyatt's birthday is also May 23rd, which is the day that Owen Hart died. And if you go back and watch a bunch of my videos, even the video where I talked about Vince McMahon retiring and how it was linked up to Cleopatra and Julius Caesar and the Stone, the Stoneman Douglas shooting and so on. And think about how the Stoneman Douglas kid's in the news again right now. You got Alex Jones in the news, and it was connected to the Austin bomber, and Alex Jones is the ties to Austin, like Stone Cold Steve Austin, and so on. All the, all that stuff was connected back to Owen Hart and Valentine's Day and Bray Wyatt. And I was just now seeing that Bray Wyatt was born on the same day Owen Hart died, which is interesting. And then you got They Live with Roddy Piper. Hulk Hogan's real name is 268. Rowdy Rowdy Piper's 268. Sylvester Stallone, 268. You just had the SummerSlam and Nissan Stadium. It was linked up to the RV Christmas bombing. But that was 268 days after the anniversary of They Live. Tennessee Titans equal 268. Bray Wyatt equals 268. So interesting he would return. Then you get Teddy Bridgewater. The Bridgewater shooting was linked to the movie They Live with Roddy Piper. It was linked to the movie, the music video called Break Glass with Disturbed that looked like they mimicked the movie They Live. Then Roddy Piper dies. Then they have a newspaper shooting or a news reporter shooting, right? All linked to the movie They Live. But it was That was also linked up to Teddy Bridgewater. And then once again, yeah, you got Liz Truss, right? You got London Bridge is falling down with Queen Elizabeth when she dies. You got Rihanna, who's important to Neptune and the Dolphins and the Trident and the 2014 Super Bowl with all the Phillips stuff I talked about. But uh, Rihanna's from Bridgewater. Or not Bridgewater, Bridgeport, I think. Whatever the place is in... Uh, Barbados, right? St. Michael's Parish, but it was Bridgeport, I think, is the capital. So th there's definitely something going off bridges. And Teddy Bridgewater just got injured just before the Dolphins play the Minnesota Vikings, his old team that I was talking about in connection to the Miami Dolphins. So, oh, it's just craziness. Plus, Bray Wyatt made his return at an event called Extreme Rules that was in Philadelphia. But Hulk Hogan got his revenge against Earthquake in Philadelphia. Ronda Rousey came out at the 2018 Royal Rumble in Philadelphia, dressed like Rowdy Roddy Piper, and then she pointed at the WrestleMania thing, saying she was going to be at WrestleMania 34, right? And that Bridgewater shooting, the newspaper people shooting, it had it said Pennsylvania at the bottom, right? And it was linked up to Philadelphia on the bottom of the screen with the picture they showed us all. And uh, the Eagles are starting off with a good season this year, right? 5-0 and so far. They won the... The Eagles won Super Bowl 52, right? That was synced to the earthquake that happened, the 4.1 earthquake that was felt near Philadelphia. Then they went on to win the Super Bowl 41 points. Super Bowl equals 41. Pope Francis's visit in 2015 at the, after the Bridgewater shooting was finished in Philadelphia. Then you got Michael Jordan and the earthquake symbolism and how the capital of the country, Jordan, used to be called Philadelphia. Then you got the Church of Philadelphia. Nissan Stadium used to be called Adelphia. So there's definitely uh, there's something important to how it links up to the earthquake and Philadelphia. Bridge earthquake symbolism that I've been following forever with Philadelphia. And remember, too, in 2000. When the Eagles won the Super Bowl, that was also held in Minnesota, right? That Super Bowl was held in Minneapolis, and it was linked up to the bridge collapse that happened on 8-1 and fell 81 feet, and the main trusses were 81 meters long. They took them 81 minutes to transport everyone to the hospital, and that was on the day 8-1. But that's also Francis Scott Key's birthday. And think about there was all that kneeling during the National Anthem symbolism that year. Think about Francis Scott Key who wrote the national anthem in Baltimore where the Ravens play or whatever. So think about that in regards to kneeling during the national anthem stuff. So something else that stands out to me in relation to Rambo 
Rambo pretty much predicted that Rihanna will be the halftime show of the Super Bowl this year. But if you go back to 2017 or just before this, the Eagles had won the Super Bowl, I had a bunch of synchronicity with the movie The Number 23 and, and Alex Jones. And it was synchronicity with Alex Jones saying, there you go. And the number 23 was important to the, the, the color pink. And there's some other things that were involved with the color pink. And I wondered if pink was going to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl in Philadelphia that year. Or since Philadelphia was going to be in the Super Bowl and so on. And then like a month later, they announced that pink was actually going to sing the, the national anthem at the Super Bowl. So I was correct. And it all had to do with synchronicity. But it's interesting how Alex Jones is also in the media again right around the same time. And if you look up Pink, Pink's uh, birthday just so happens to be the same day Queen Elizabeth died. So I feel like there's something that's more important to this that's going on that I don't fully grasp. But I do know that later in 2018, the same day Alex Jones got kicked off of a bunch of social media stuff, that was on August 6th. And that same day we got a story about Pink canceling her show in Australia and there was a whole bunch of other th things synced up to that with the Goldberg from the Mighty Ducks. And I have a ton of videos on this, but the, I'm just thinking she got, her show was canceled in Australia. And if you go back to that original Buffy, the vampire slayer stuff, that same day, it was important. There was a 310 mile dust storm in Australia. So I'm just wondering, it's, it's just making me think there's might be something important to Australia that's linked to this narrative. And also just, just sitting here looking at this, it says Pink was the most, most played female soul artist in the United Kingdom during the 2000s decade behind Madonna. It's just interesting, it would be the United Kingdom and then she's behind Madonna. And think about Madonna in relation to the Virgin Mary, which is important to this date right here, right? The day important to the Virgin Mary also, the angel Gabriel, he only talks to Zachariah, Daniel, and Mary in the Bible. So that's another interesting thing, and it's something I've talked about for a long time. And this is also Zach's mother's birthday, who is named Donna. But then you got Madonna, who at one time was married to Sean Penn, and then Sean Penn's mother just ended up dying, and she was in the movie Eight-Legged Freaks. So there's some interesting parallels going on, I think. It's inter I didn't even notice, you know, I never put that together until looking at pink again here and just seeing this as I paused the video. I was like, what? So interesting that would even be written in here, but a Madonna thing. Madonna used to be married to Sean Penn. And I'm pretty sure, too, that, uh, let me see here. I'm pretty sure, too, what's going on? It won't let me scroll. Ah. I'm pretty sure that Madonna was also in the news. Just I just blogged about this. I can't even remember it all. Yeah, with, with Sean Penn's mother. If you look at the things here, you got Sean Penn's mother dead right here. And then you got a story about Madonna, just a few stories down about how she might have came out on TikTok. So she might be gay now or something, right? So it's just interesting here. And a story with Julia Roberts right up above here, too. And, and George Clooney. George Clooney had the twins during Gemini a few years ago when I was talking about all that twin symbolism. But Julia Roberts is in, she's the voice of one of the things in Charlotte's Web. Hold on. Charlotte's Web. Julia Roberts is the voice of Charlotte, I'm pretty sure. So how interesting. I never even put that together here. So we got Eight-Legged Freaks and then a story about Julia Roberts and a story about Madonna. So who knows? No doubt all them stories are there for me to see at least, you know, to connect the dots here. It's mind-blowing. And Wendy Allen, she showed me, she was the one who told me about Eileen Ryan died. I don't think I ever would have caught that without her leaving this comment. So, and then I went to... I went to CNN to find the story and I saw it and I read it and I was just like, get the fuck out of here, you know? And right when I said that, I heard the TV say, 
let's get out of here. And this, I looked up at the TV and my kid was watching something on Netflix where this duck goes in and he tries to grab a thing of candy and it turns out to be a bunch of spiders or whatever. That's what it, they make it seem it looks like spiders, right? It's like, you've got to be kidding me. So I had synchronicity with the TV and spiders. Sean Penn was also really important to uh, the Ukraine and Russia stuff. Remember that? Remember he went and leave Ukraine and it was linked up to the bridge and symbolism I was talking about with Family Guy from a few years back. I think it was 2017 or 18 that I had. And that same day that Sean Penn was big in the news with the the stuff, I also had synchronicity with my aunt in Bon Jovi. And I, I was talking about this theme with nine days. And then nine days later, on the date 310, there was a train crash that happened near where I live. And the thing with my aunt was it was important because her husband was my uncle and his name equaled 300 to Ted and Gematria, And he died the same day as the Philadelphia train wreck in 2015. And a few days after that synchronicity, we got the news that the engineer of that train was found not guilty on the charges of that wreck in 2015, which is odd. And then on the day, so I was watching the date 310 again this year. And on that day, there was a train wreck just 19 miles away from my house with the tiger on it and a whole bunch of other stuff. But, you know, I'm just, that was the same day that Sean Penn was in the news and that was connected to the bridge earthquake symbolism. And I'm just starting to think now you had the, the story about the Crimea bridge being attacked or whatever and Putin being mad about it or something in the news, right? So Sean Penn, Ukraine, there was definitely something going on there. I even had synchronicity with Ed O'Neill Ed o and the Simpsons the other night. Ed O'Neill's he's Al Bundy, and there's an episode where he makes fun of the Mets, and I can't remember, I, I just remember it vividly, where he says, yeah, they do the Mets in one of the shows when I was a kid, and I can't find the episode, but... Ed O'Neill was undrafted. He was, he was an undrafted free agent for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it just makes me think about how Sean Penn was important to the Pittsburgh bridge collapse that happened earlier this year. And in relation to the number 226, Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine 226 days before his birthday. So it's an interesting thing there. 226. I'm wondering too, I, I've been seeing, I'm in this group, it's on my phone, I have two different Facebooks, so on my one, on the one on my phone, somehow I got into this group called Quarantined Beer Chugs, and it is a bunch of people from the Kansas City area, and they chug beers and whatever, and uh, I, don't, my, I think my cousin told me to add that group a long time ago or something, he's from Kansas City area, and uh, anyway, there's this guy on there named Musa, but every, everyone, his, he's from Turkey, but he lives in the United States or something, and he always posts about drinking wine, and he's wearing a Speedo, and he's had tons of posts, but he's never been to a Chiefs game, so all these people, like, got together, and they took him to a Chiefs game, and he's, like, the big talk on this thing, and, I mean, I, I get posts of it, like, every hour, I feel like, of this guy, but he's from Turkey, and it just, I don't know, I'm just wondering, because Turkey also had that 310 connection, and it was, I noticed that connection right after the Buffy the Vampire slough with Luke Perry dying in the number 310. And the turkey president, his birthday is 226. So. And it, so there, there's got to be something going on with that. 226. How it's related. I'm trying to think why 226. The earlier I talked about Hulk Hogan and the uh, earthquake, right? The guy named Earthquake is John Tenta, whose name equals 107, like Earthquake. But look what his birthday is. His birthday, 22 slash 6. And then he died on June 7th, which would have been the birth... It's That's the birthday of Sarah Lee. Right? So, I don't know. Just something interesting. Another 226. Actually, let me double check. The turkey president, I thought his name was... I thought he was born on that day. Yeah, 226. And once again, you got Thanksgiving coming up soon. Turkey. 
there's a lot to do with boxing too with the ukraine stuff right there's lots to do with boxing and it was a part to conor mcgregor who has the 22 and 6 record now so possibly there's something connected to anderson silva too who's nicknamed the spider anderson silva the spider I don't know. Just trying to fit, piece this puzzle together with the spider symbolism, but. Numerous times. He left the UFC to return to boxing, huh? How interesting, right? Oh, there must be something important to this guy. Anderson Silva. What's his name equal? Well, this is an interesting number I've talked about a lot with Russia and so on, and the lightning symbolism. Hmm. Anderson Da Silva, is that what it was? Nothing really stands out that much, but... Except for the 304. Maybe the 81 that's connected to... I always notice that with bridge symbolism. Hmm. Let's go back and look at some of these posts, though. And then I'm going to end the video. I hope I made my point. I'm just showing that you can follow the stream of consciousness and all these, like, crazy things go on, you know? In the movie Eight-Legged Freaks, well, I noticed that Scarlett Johansson is, like, a, she's in that movie. She's pretty young in that movie. And uh, when I was looking her up, I noticed that she's also, her name equals 424. Which is that big another big number I've been following, right? Two forty six, like New York Mets. But she's in a movie called Girl with a Pearl Earring, and pearl symbolism is connected to Queen Elizabeth. She's also Black Widow in the Marvel films. Think about Black Widow and spiders, and Black Widow is a Russian, so must be something with that. Look at two twenty six, Angela Lansbury from Murder She Wrote. Who is also in Mary Poppins. That's important to the umbrella symbolism, right? Once again, that stems back to Turkey, but Angela Lansbury. 226 is what her name equals to Javatria. And her full name equals 424. And Murder, She Wrote, equals 186. That big number with the umbrella symbolism, right? So. Definitely something important. 226. You know, there's so many synchronicities. You have no idea. I'm DJing a wedding tomorrow for this guy got a hold of me just whatever, six months ago. I, I barely ever see him, seen him, don't hang out with him for 10 years, maybe more. And I'm randomly DJing his wedding on Saturday then. And what's, what's interesting is that probably 15 years ago, he accidentally burnt down a house. We were out, we were partying out in the country on this dirt road that barely has any houses. It's an old abandoned house. We probably did, it probably did the farmers a favor. They're probably going to burn it down anyway. But like, he was messing around, like lighting a mattress on fire a little bit. And it all of a sudden just like went woof and it like engulfed in flames and we couldn't put it out. And that abandoned house ended up burning down. And the next day, I found out the fire department was all out there. And there was an anhydrous tank next to the house, and they were worried it was going to blow up. But then they found out that somebody stole all the anhydrous out of it. A bunch of tweakers must have stole the anhydrous out of it. So I always made this joke for years about how, you know, crackheads or whatever, meth heads, fucking, they uh, saved the town of Dunlap because they stole all the anhydrous out of the anhydrous tank. And if it weren't for the tweakers, then we wouldn't be here and whatever, you know. And uh, it's just interesting, though, because... Like two days ago, a house on that road burnt down again. And it was, it was like an old crappy house that I don't know how it burnt down, but some old lady apparently lived there. I didn't even know there was another house on that road. And apparently there's another house a little bit further down on that dirt road and it burnt down too. And it's like, it burns down like two or three days before I'm going to go DJ at this guy's house who accidentally burnt that house down when I was younger. I mean, just, just stuff like that. And... His name equals 226 and also 310. I didn't write it in here for obvious reasons, but he is 
a nephew of my uncle Barney, who I always talk about with the umbrella symbolism, right? And, but he's on the other side. He's not related to me. But the date 1015 of his wedding, that is the day that my uncle Barney's daughter died, right? And that's also the day that my uncle Barney's first sibling, my uncle Kelly died, right? So tomorrow just seems significant. That's also the day that Charlotte's Web came out, right? So I feel like that tomorrow is there's something important for me to see with spiders and the spider symbolism that I'm thinking about. A while back, I had a bunch of synchronicity with fires, right? When I was talking about the peacock symbolism too. So we will see. I wonder if there's going to be something with fire or spiders tomorrow when I'm DJing that wedding. But it's interesting now seeing how it's connected to Charlotte's Web too. And yeah, it's also in a place I've never DJed before. It's in Blair, Nebraska. I mean, I have drove through it maybe a few times. I have no clue where I'm going or anything, so... I don't know. I can't even remember what the venue is called. Maybe like Red Barn or something. So, you know, it's in a barn even. Or I think, I'm think i pretty sure it's called Red Barn something. Which, I don't know, just it makes me laugh. If that's what it's really called. Then, uh, you know, just thinking about the Charlotte's Web thing. This isn't like a barn. I'll just leave it there. I mean, there's just, I have so many, there's so many weird things. Let's see. I think you get the gist of it. Go watch Rambo's video. I'm going to leave this in the description. Go watch Rambo's video. Even just come back and read maybe my last 10, 15 blog posts. And you're going to go, what in the world? You know what I mean? Like everything that I've been following through synchronicities is linked up to the stuff that he was talking about in this video. You know what I mean? And it's just like, so even if they, someone was doing all of this on purpose, what are the odds that I have all these synchronicities and the stream of consciousness leads me to the exact same thing that he's talking about. And he makes the video on the exact same day when I noticed this pattern with spiders, you know, that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. There's something more but it's just so much deeper with this knowledge and we got to pay attention to this and not just do really simple decodes and say that every number means this and every number means this because there there's multiple ways to look at it. And I do understand why people do decode that way, right? It does seem obvious that it does seem that way that, that people are manipulating the stories and doing them on purpose. It really, it really does. I agree with that. I have that opinion as well. Especially when you just, you realize there is some type of cabal that's trying to rule your mind and rule whatever. And you see all these stories linked to coronavirus and we're talking about how it's linked to the Jesuits for how long. And then all of a sudden all these stories are linked to the Jesuits and I get it. They are. But once again, there's other things that it can connect to. So then it leads the question, Hey, maybe something is guiding us to have that belief that it is the Jesuits, you know, like there, you know, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out, but this deeper relationship with each number and how each number doesn't have a specific meaning is something that a lot of people don't understand within the community. Right? So I guess I'm just trying to get more people to really delve into the knowledge and advance their understanding of it and start to realize that synchronicities and other things aren't just something that happen every now and then they're happening all of the time. And I mean, look at all these things I figured out just by following a stream of consciousness and you know, how it linked up to the mainstream media stories, how it linked up to Rambo's video. Uh, there's something to be said about how to decoding this way and paying attention to the stream of consciousness that a lot of people just, in this community think is just, you know, really stupid because I'm not exposing the Jesuits every with every number. But once again, when you start realizing the stream of consciousness and the way how every number doesn't always necessarily mean that connection to the Jesuits or the Freemasons or whatever, you're really going to start understanding what I'm saying with this. And then hopefully we can get this greater understanding of what this world truly is and why we exist in a world this way. That's really what I want out of this knowledge, I feel like. I just want understanding. 
I want the the truth. I want knowledge of the the world. I obviously see there's just this vastness of that most people in the world just don't even care about. And like, I think about it all day, every day, and I just want more, you know? So I don't know, maybe I'm being selfish because I want other people to, to, you know, look at it in the perspective that I'm looking at it at, because I want more people to help me, you know, I don't know, but moral of the story, just, I just want more people to, to start really paying attention and realizing that the things that they always thought about Gematria and how it's connected to the organic side, it's it's a lot more meaningful than most people are letting, uh, thinking that it is, uh, you know, so. We'll leave it there. I have to go to some comedy show tonight, so. Hopefully that'll be a good night. I'm sure there'll be some cool synchronicities and so on. But uh, have a good one. We'll keep following the spider theme. Peace.